Welcome to the video overview of the web interface to the Energy Policy Simulator, or EPS. The EPS is a free and open source computer model that can help you design packages of policies to reduce pollution. This video is the second in a short series about the EPS. It describes the features of the tool's user-friendly yet powerful web interface. The interface allows you to run the model on the server and visualize the results in your browser. The global homepage for the EPS can be found at www.energypolicy.solutions. The EPS has been adapted to a number of different countries and regions. When you visit the global homepage, you will have the ability to access any existing EPS version. From time to time, new regional adaptations are added by us and by our partners around the world, so there are likely to be more options today than there were when this video was recorded. Let's click on the button for the United States, which is the EPS version we will use for this demo. Each regional version of the EPS has its own landing page. The landing page provides some introductory text, a button to access the simulator's web interface, a menu allowing easy navigation between regional EPS versions, a link to the model documentation, and a button that allows you to sign in or register an account so you can save and access policy scenarios that you create. It is not necessary to have an account in order to use the simulator. Let's jump right into the web interface by clicking the Enter Simulator button. If you have not accessed the EPS using this web browser before, a simple quick start tutorial appears. This video provides a more in-depth tutorial, so we will click the Skip Tutorial button. This is the web interface for the Energy Policy Simulator. Let's walk through each element. The graph on the right shows outputs from the model. Currently, the graph is displaying total U.S. greenhouse gas emissions in carbon dioxide equivalent. The graph also displays the emissions target to which the U.S. committed as part of the 2015 Paris Climate Accord. The key at the bottom shows that we are in fact seeing two scenarios, business as usual, and New Scenario. New Scenario is the scenario that we are now in the process of designing. We haven't added any policies to our scenario yet, so the line for New Scenario is right on top of the line for the Business as Usual scenario. The Policy Scenario Selector, on the upper left, indicates which scenario is currently active. The active scenario is the one that will be affected when we enable various policies. The tree menu on the left lists the policies we can use. They are grouped by sector. There are also sections for cross-sector policies and for research and development. The box in the lower left lists the policies that are included in the active scenario. These policies are additional to any policies whose effects are already incorporated in the business-as-usual case. The box is empty because we haven't yet added any policies to New Scenario, the scenario we are designing. The Output Graph Selector menus allow you to change which output is displayed in the graph below. We will take a look at some other graphs later in this video. We will also go over the functionality of the buttons in the button bar at the top of the screen later in the video. Now, let's add a policy to our scenario. Clicking on the cross-sector section expands the section, revealing the cross-sector policies that are available in the simulator. Now, let's expand the carbon tax policy to see how it can be applied. Below carbon tax, we see a list of sectors. This indicates that the carbon tax may be set to different values for different sectors of the economy. The items to which a policy may be applied vary depending on which policy we are looking at. For example, if we expand the fuel taxes policy, we see that fuel taxes are specified by fuel, not by economic sector. 
Some policies, such as promotion of carbon capture and sequestration, do not have subdivisions. For now, let's apply a carbon tax to the U.S. electricity sector. Below Carbon Tax, we click on Electricity Sector. The policy setting pane appears. At the top, there is a slider, allowing us to select a value for the policy. In this case, we can choose a value between $0 and $300 per metric ton of carbon dioxide equivalent. In the web interface, the maximum allowable policy setting is capped, typically at a value representing the strongest such policy enacted anywhere in the world. Below the slider, you will find a brief description of the policy, which can help if the policy is unfamiliar. Most policies also feature guidance text, which aims to provide a helpful point of reference for setting policy values. Depending on the policy, different sorts of values might be used to provide guidance, such as an existing policy, a technical potential, or a comparison to another country. Below, there is a set of three links. The first link displays and allows customization of this policy's implementation schedule, a feature we'll look at in a moment. The second link opens a web page containing more detailed information about this policy and how to design it to achieve one's goals and to avoid unintended consequences. The third link takes you to the place in the Energy Policy Simulator's documentation where the workings of the relevant part of the model are described. Now, let's use the slider to set the carbon tax on the electricity sector to $50 per ton. The model is immediately run on the server and the graph updates in real time. Now we can see both lines on the graph as the purple line for our new scenario diverges from the black BAU line. Now, let's customize the implementation schedule for this policy. We click on the first link, and the Schedule Customization pane appears. The small graph in the upper left shows how the policy phases in over time. The implementation percentage is the fraction of your chosen policy setting that is in effect in a given year. For example, recall that the setting we chose for the carbon tax was $50 per metric ton of CO2e. This means that when the implementation percentage is 50%, the carbon tax is $25 per ton. Under the default implementation schedule, the carbon tax phases in linearly, from 0 in 2018 to $50 per ton in 2050. The table below the small graph allows us to customize this implementation schedule. We specify pairs of values, a year paired with an implementation percentage. The simulator will linearly interpolate between the points we specify. For example, suppose we want our carbon tax to phase in beginning in 2031, to reach 90% strength in 2040, and to reach 100% strength in 2050. We start by editing the second row of the table, changing the year from 2018 to 2030. We leave the implementation percentage at zero. The small graph is immediately updated, so we can make sure our implementation schedule looks as we expect it to look. Next, we add a new row to the table containing year 2040 and implementation percentage 90%. If we are happy with the schedule, we click OK. The schedule is immediately applied, and the CO2e emissions graph on the right is updated. Let's click OK to close the policy setting pane. In the Policy Tree menu, we can see a couple changes. Under Carbon Tax, next to Electricity Sector, we see our policy setting of $50 per ton. Also, Next to each of the sectors under Carbon Tax, there is a small clock icon. This clock icon is a reminder that we have customized the implementation schedule for the Carbon Tax. 
Although the carbon tax can be set to different values for different sectors, all of the sectors share the same implementation schedule. Also, the box in the lower left has been updated to include the policy we've chosen. This box will maintain an up-to-date list of all the policies included in our policy package. In addition to the business-as-usual scenario, most regional EPS adaptations include one or more built-in policy scenarios. To see them, we can activate them in the Comparisons pane, which we bring up using this button. The Comparisons pane includes three sections. My Scenarios lists all of the scenarios that we have created, starting with New Scenario. To save custom scenarios to the server, we would need to log in or register an account. The Reference Scenarios section includes all of the built-in scenarios that are included with the Energy Policy Simulator. All country or regional EPS adaptations include a business-as-usual scenario, and most adaptations include one or more policy scenarios. There are three policy scenarios included with the United States Simulator. A set of policies that hits the United States Paris Climate Target, or NDC, one that reflects the recommendations of Energy Innovation LLC, and one that minimizes greenhouse gas emissions within the bounds of the policy levers in the web interface. Finally, each EPS adaptation may contain one or more greenhouse gas emissions targets. The display of these targets can be toggled on or off. Let's enable all of the included reference scenarios, then click OK. A line for each scenario is added to the graph. We can mouse over the lines to see their names and their numerical values in each year. Although there are now several scenarios displayed on the graph, only one of these is the active scenario. The active scenario is the one whose name is displayed in the Policy Scenario Selector box in the upper left. This box also indicates when we have modified a scenario but haven't saved our changes. Suppose we want to know which policies are part of the US NDC scenario, that is, the blue line. To find out, we need to make the NDC scenario the active scenario. We open the Policy Scenario Selector menu and select US NDC. A dialog box appears asking if we want to discard our unsaved changes to New Scenario. We won't need that scenario again for this video tutorial, so we will discard our changes. The US NDC scenario is now active, and we can see the full list of included policies in the box in the lower left. So far, we've only been looking at the graph of total greenhouse gas emissions. However, the web interface offers a large number of other outputs. Let's take a look at some of them. First, to reduce clutter, I'm going to remove New Scenario from the graphs using the Comparisons pane. Selection of output graphs is handled in two menus. The first menu contains categories, and the second menu selects between graphs within each category. For example, Let's go to the Electricity Generation and Capacity by Type category. Notice that the second graph selector menu says Generation, indicating we are looking at the quantity of electricity generated from each technology, such as coal, natural gas, nuclear, hydro, and so forth. For graphs that contain more than one data series, such as this graph of electricity generation by type, it is not possible to display multiple scenarios on the same graph. Therefore, the graph reflects the output from the active scenario, which is the US NDC scenario. This scenario contains policies that are causing all coal power plants to retire by 2048. 
If we wish to compare this result with the business as usual composition of the electricity sector, we can switch between the two scenarios using the scenario selector menu. Alternatively, we can perform this comparison more precisely using a different graph. Let's switch back to the US and DC scenario and then change the second graph selector menu to policy driven change in generation. Each line shows how much more or less electricity generation comes from each type of power plant in the US and DC scenario relative to the BAU scenario. Let's look at a few more graphs. The energy policy simulator can estimate the financial cost or savings of a policy package. Many packages exhibit a pattern of costs in the early years followed by savings in later years. This is because policies that strengthen linearly tend to increase investment in capital equipment such as solar panels, wind turbines, and more efficient industrial machinery at a more or less constant rate, while the fuel savings provided by the new equipment grow over time as an ever greater quantity of new equipment has been cumulatively deployed throughout the economy. The EPS can also estimate the number of human lives saved from reduced particulate pollution each year. This includes directly emitted particulates, such as PM2.5, and gaseous pollutants that contribute to particulate formation in the atmosphere, such as nitrogen oxides. The EPS has many sector-specific graphs. For example, this graph shows the technological composition of the entire fleet of light-duty passenger road vehicles in the U.S. under the NDC scenario. It predicts that battery electric vehicles would take substantial market share from gasoline vehicles by 2050. Similar graphs are available for other vehicle types. For example, here is the technological composition of the fleet of buses. Although electric buses gain market share, most buses in 2050 still run on diesel. In the industry sector, we can examine fuel use, which can be further subdivided by industry or by fuel. The EPS is not limited to energy-related emissions. It also includes process emissions, that is, pollution emitted in the course of industrial or agricultural operations. One example is carbon dioxide emitted by the cement industry when limestone is converted to lime, a step in the cement manufacturing process. In the electricity sector, we can view the levelized cost of generating electricity from various sources. Or we can visualize the amount of curtailed electricity from renewables. The EPS also features two special types of graph that break apart the active policy package, revealing the contribution of different policies to total abatement and financial outcomes. The CO2E wedge diagram fills the space between the line for the business as usual case and the line for the active scenario with colored wedges, each corresponding to the reduction in emissions caused by one policy in the package. In the CO2E cost curve, each policy is represented by a box. The width of the box is the average annual abatement caused by the policy, and the height of the box above or below the x-axis is the financial cost or savings the policy achieves per ton of CO2e abated. Boxes below the x-axis save money while boxes above the x-axis cost money. On this chart almost all of the policies save money because we opted to include mostly money-saving policies when we designed the US NDC scenario. A scenario that uses more policies, such as the built-in CO2E minimizing scenario, would show more policies that incur costs. The cost curve can be calculated on a net present value basis through 2030 or through 2050, and it may use standard cash flow accounting 
or treat the carbon tax as revenue neutral. There are plenty of other graphs here for you to explore. For now, let's return to the total CO2e graph and take a look at the buttons in the button bar at the top of the screen. The first six buttons handle file management operations, similar to functions you may be familiar with from other software programs. These buttons allow you to start a new scenario, save your scenario, save a copy of your scenario with a new name, that is, save as, rename your scenario, delete your scenario, and revert your scenario to the last saved version. Suppose you have designed a scenario you like and you want to see its outputs in a table format, or perhaps you want to use a graph in a report and a screenshot of the web app wouldn't look right. Clicking this button will download a zip archive to your computer containing two spreadsheet files. One file lists the policy settings of the active scenario. The other file contains the results of the active scenario for whichever graph is currently being displayed. This will allow you to view the outputs in numerical format and create graphs in the program of your choice. This button allows you to share your scenario by email. This button toggles between single and dual graph display. Dual graph display is useful when you are designing a scenario and wish to immediately see how your changes to policy settings affect two different metrics, such as emissions and electricity sector composition. This button brings up the comparisons pane. We went over how to use this pane earlier in this video. This button brings up the model documentation in a new browser tab. Every aspect of the energy policy simulator is extensively documented. The rightmost button allows you to register or log into your account on the server. It is necessary to be logged into an account in order to save your own custom scenarios. Some adaptations of the energy policy simulator may include a language toggle button allowing you to switch between English and the alternative language for that EPS adaptation. The United States EPS is only available in English, so no language toggle button is displayed. This concludes our tour of the Energy Policy Simulator's web interface. As a reminder, this is the second video in a short series about the EPS. The first video offers an overview of the simulator. The next two videos provide a look under the hood at the inner workings of the tool, including its input data and how the EPS can be adapted for different countries or regions. Links to all of these videos appear in the comments field.